Hello, my name is Johnny Binder, General Curator of Cameron Park Zoo. Brian Henley, our Animal Care Manager of Reptiles, has been assigned to work with the Crocodilian Taxon Advisory Group, which is an umbrella of the IUCN, which is the International Union of Conservation of the Natural World. This is a really important global committee that's actually traveled to Cuba to study and to try to understand the status of the Cuban crocodile. Now, the Cuban crocodile has been in a endangered status for many, many years due to habitat loss, uh, uh, human impact, and several other things. So Brian was actually able to go to Cuba to work out into the swamps and the jungles to try to start a baseline study of what's actually going on with the Cuban crocodile in the wild and how American zoos can help the status of this wonderful endangered animal. Please join us today as we step into the wild. Hello, my name is Brian Henley and I am the Animal Care Manager of Amphibians and Reptiles here at the Cameron Park Zoo in Waco, Texas. And one of the things that we do here at the zoo is we try to work with rare and endangered species of uh, amphibians and reptiles as well as other fauna and flora as well. Uh, and I just returned from a trip in Cuba where we discussed conservation efforts of the Cuban crocodile. Due to new evidence found, it was determined that it was time to have another international meeting regarding the conservation status of the crocodiles found in Cuba. There are two species of crocodiles native to Cuba. Largest and most abundant is the American crocodile, which is also the largest species of crocodile found in the New World. Uh, they can reach up to about 18 to 20 feet uh, in length for males. They are also found throughout the Caribbean, northern South America, and the Pacific coast of Mexico through Central America. So it's a wide-ranging species and they are considered vulnerable by the International Union of the Conservation of Nature. The other native species to Cuba is the Cuban crocodile, which is a much smaller species, only reaching 9 or 10 feet in length. Uh, and they're considered to be one of the more attractive species of crocodiles because they have kind of a bright yellow skin and it's very vibrant yellow as it, that is speckled with kind of black splashes that go up and down the body. So they're really attractive. One of the interesting things about them is historically uh, they were found throughout the Bahamas, Cayman Islands, and extreme southern Florida. And there is some fossil evidence that suggests that they did evolve to feed on the Caribbean ground sloth. June 5th to June 9th, 2017, in the city of Playa Heron, this international meeting was hosted. They brought together folks from Spain, the United States, Germany, Denmark, as well as a lot of the Cuban biologists there that work with the Cuban crocodiles. We went into the Zapata Swamp to a main research station and were able to release 10 Cuban crocodiles back into the Zapata Swamp. Uh, they were head-started crocodiles that were about four years old, so they were about four feet of length, which takes them out of the range of most predators that they would have, such as birds, fish, turtles, you know, even big frogs can eat uh, small crocodiles as they only hatch at about eight inches long. Now, common threats to the Cuban crocodile are overhunting, hybridization with the more common American crocodile, and loss of habitat. An interesting note is that the Cuban crocodiles are found almost exclusively in freshwater, but rising sea levels are a threat to their habitat because of salt water moving into where they are naturally found in those swamps. Currently, the Cuban crocodile is restricted to two places uh, in Cuba. One is the Zapata Swamp, which is on the southern part of the island, and there is another island called the Isle of Youth, where the crocodile is found in a central swamp right on that island. 
Some of the goals of this meeting were ultimately to present an overview on the status of the conservation of the crocodile species in Cuba, evaluate and design actions to strengthen current conservation management strategies effective for the protection and management of crocodile in Cuba, with an emphasis on the critically endangered Cuban crocodile, focusing on supporting reintroduction efforts and evaluating current threats and most urgent actions that are needed, sharing knowledge and experience with international specialists on crocodile conservation and management, and building a database of international experts and advisors and possible funding sources to seek additional support for crocodile conservation in Cuba. One of the things that are really trying to happen is to get local people involved and to educate them about crocodiles and the benefit of having crocodiles in, in the environment, in the wild, uh, around them, and how that it does impact uh, people and the whole environment. Communication between Cuban crocodile experts and international experts have been strengthened. A great amount of networking and intellectual exchange has been able to take place regarding such topics as incubation techniques, husbandry for captive crocodiles, farming for reintroduction efforts, habitat viability assessment, and population management of wild crocodiles. It was really invigorating and in in really eye-opening to be able to go to Cuba to witness the things that were going on and to be able to release a critically endangered species back into its natural habitat was was a really a special event that took place that not a lot of people ever get to do in their lifetime no matter how long they work in the zoo field or as a biologist or conservationist they may never get that opportunity and it was, I feel extremely lucky that I was a part of that group and had the ability to go through and, and to do that. The Cameron Park Zoo in Waco is a member by invitation of the World Association of Zoos and Aquariums and is an accredited member of the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, a worldwide organization of more than 200 accredited members who are leaders in global wildlife conservation and assistance in helping animals in their native habitat. For more information, visit CameronParkZoo.com.